Welcome to Entrepreneur Mindset Reset, the podcast for entrepreneurs who want to learn from fellow business owners how to decrease the chaos and increase their sense of fulfillment while becoming more profitable. I'm your host, Tracy Trepesky. I'm an executive coach and consultant and leadership development expert. I'm also mom to two amazing teenagers and a menagerie of adopted furry family members. In each episode, we explore challenges, opportunities, and actionable tips to help you take control of your time and energy and improve your bottom line while staying true to your vision. You'll hear from me and my guests how we've tackled some of the pitfalls and unexpected surprises that entrepreneurship delivers. We're the real deal, and we're here to inspire and encourage you. Let's dive in. Welcome to episode 58 of Entrepreneur Mindset Reset, the podcast where entrepreneurs just like you and me learn how to take back their time and increase their success while staying true to their vision and mission. It's me, Tracy, and I bring you a solo episode where we'll explore hustle culture and discuss how when we unwittingly or perhaps wittingly, thanks to FOMO, jump into the trap, we are immersing ourselves in a steaming putrid bath of toxicity. Now, I don't know about you, but I certainly don't want to bathe myself in anything steamingly putrid. Also, I really don't want to be around people who do that. So let's do something about it. Before we dive in, I want to take some time to acknowledge and thank a few people, starting with Eva Janata, who left us a five-star review. Eva said, a shot of energy and insight, five stars. I love Tracy's energy. I was caught in the very traps she and her guests discuss and I still am sometimes. This show gives me the actionable insights and inspiration to change how I think about my work, business, and life. Thank you for your kind words, Eva. I'm so happy to hear that our conversations and insights are resonating and helping spark some adjustments along your entrepreneurial journey. We received another five-star review from FJJDKA who said, entrepreneurs sit up and pay attention, five stars. Tracy has a wide variety of guests who get you to sit up and take notice. Sometimes entrepreneurship can feel lonely and difficult, and this podcast helps you recognize the arduous and wonderful journey being an entrepreneur is. Highly recommend. Thank you so much, FJJDKA. I personally have experienced that entrepreneurial loneliness, and my intention when birthing this podcast was to help bridge that gap between branching out on our own and feeling alone on a deserted island. I am thrilled to hear that we're accomplishing that with each episode. I would like to remind you, dear listener, that reviews like these help us reach more entrepreneurs who are feeling alone on the island. So please do take a few minutes to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts sharing what's resonating with you and how other entrepreneurs just like you can find comfort in a place where we're all learning, growing, and sometimes fumbling forward together. We appreciate your support of our growth and know your time is precious, so thank you in advance for your review. One final acknowledgement goes to the incomparable Cami Gildner, host of Extraordinary Women Radio Podcast. Cammie had me on her show recently, and I so enjoyed being a guest. It was really fun to be on the other side of the microphone, so to speak. Cammie made our our conversation easy, enjoyable, and insightful, and she also reflected her experiences and shared her thoughts. Something that you won't see when you go listen, and I highly recommend that you subscribe and enjoy a nice binge of her podcast. It's so empowering and inspirational. I'll make sure to link my episode in the show notes, but Okay, so I'm going to stop fangirling and finish my thought. But so as I started to say something you, you won't see when you go listen is their smooth, professional white glove service behind the scenes. My team and I are taking notes and up-leveling our behind-the-scenes processes after the incredible experience that we had as a guest on their show. I just love learning from people who've gone before me. And in this case, Cammie and her team helped me see what's possible to live into the level of service I wish to provide both to my clients and to our guests on the show. So a huge thank you to Cammie and her team. Let's get down to it and talk hustle culture, shall we? I'm sure you're ready. So I'm going to start with a quote from Julie Ball, a Forbes Small Business Council contributor. She talks about how to navigate the toxicity of hustle culture, and she says... Hustle culture teaches us that there's always more, more money to make, 
a bigger title or promotion, and a higher wall to climb. End quote. So there's a lot out there about hustle culture and how to break out of the trap. And and there's a lot of excellent support and guidance on this. And I believe for the highly motivated entrepreneur founder, it's not quite going big enough. I know I can already feel your eyes rolling as I sound like a talking contradiction by saying we're going to need to go bigger while I'm dissing hustle culture, but stay with me. If I've learned anything in my nearly 12 years of coaching highly credentialed, high achieving business owners and founders, it's that going big is really the only language they understand. So let's go big. You know, we, we talk a lot about meeting people where they're at. So let's just go ahead and aim high, zoom out to that 10,000 foot view. I'm inviting you to come with me on a journey. So if hustle culture is telling us to prioritize work over everything else, wear busyness as a badge of honor, stay connected 24-7, be omnipresent, outperform peers, stand out in a crowd, put head down and get busy, rise and grind, rinse and repeat, and so on and so forth. If hustle culture is telling us all that, and if as an entrepreneur, you're wondering how the hell you're supposed to do all the things while also not willingly jumping into the bear trap of hustle culture, then you're in the right place because we're going to break that down today. Let's first explore how to know if you're taking part in hustle culture. It could be subtle or there could be some blaring signs. And, and hold, let me back up a minute and just say this is a judgment-free zone. It's never too late to make a change. It's never too late to course correct. And so without judgment and with so much love, let's explore. Grab something to write with if you haven't already and start taking notes, okay? Let's go. Here are some signs you're engaged in hustle culture and its toxicity is making you sick. You're tired, like all the time. You don't sleep much. And when you do, You wake up frequently with the dreaded 3 a.m. sweats, and this has nothing to do with your hormonal makeup, by the way. You know you should chill out, but you feel guilty even taking a five-minute break away from your desk or place of work. You've missed out on important life events for friends, family, and loved ones, or you're there, but you're distracted by work or thoughts of work. You know you should set regular work hours, But you know the internet is 24 hours a day, and if you're not consistently showing up, you're not doing it right. The last time you took a vacation, you brought laptop, tablet, phone, and all chargers plus a backup hotspot just in case. Or you've put off taking a vacation because there's just too much work to do and nobody gets shit done like you do. How about something more subtle like hmm, low-grade nagging feeling that you've left something incomplete? or you're juggling more than three big projects at a time and none of them are getting done. You find yourself thinking about how to outdo your competition. Maybe you feel jealous of your contemporary success, even if they've been in business much longer than you have. And this is the important distinction. That jealousy doesn't have the positive impact of inspiring you to learn from them, but instead you feel resentment and a desire to either hide under a rock or work your face off until you can prove to the world that you're just as good or better than your contemporaries. Okay, barring like physical, physiological, or mental health conditions that may contribute to any of this list, let's get real, okay? First, hey, deep breath. I want you to know that you're enough. You are sufficient. That's more than enough. Sufficient means more than enough. Plenty. Perhaps, however, you don't currently have sufficient support or sufficient knowledge or sufficient experience in your business to have achieved the success you crave. And you may think, especially because we can see anytime when we open our phones that working around the clock and sacrificing all the good things is the answer or the cure to your lack of, air quotes, your lack of success. Uh Aha. So this is where I want to stop. Just pause. Okay. This is where I start with my clients, by the way. Whatever ails my clients when they come to me in terms of their business almost always leads back to time, lack of time, running out of time, feeling pressured, 
thinking they need to work all the time in order to achieve their goals and success they crave. Not even to mention figuring out how to make more money. And hey, listen, I get it. As entrepreneurs, we seem to be wired up to always seek more. What else can we create, master, and share with the world? This is a good thing. And this is one of those yes and moments. And you can want all the things, the accomplishments, the success, the growth, the money, and more. And the best way to stay out of the toxicity of hustle culture is to slow TF down and get crystal clear about what success means to you. Yes, we're redefining success. And that may sound trite because we hear it a lot, right? I need to redefine success on your own terms, blah, blah, blah. But stay with me here. So my hypothesis about why so many well-meaning, heart-centered entrepreneurs find themselves in the success trap or the bear trap of hustle culture is this. They've either never taken the time to get super clear about what they want and why that's important to them, or they have done that, but lost sight of it for any number of reasons. It could be lack, fear, outside pressure, insufficient or the wrong kind of support, putting their well-being on the back burner, thinking that using their self-care time for working will yield better results. It could be anything, you name it. And we could go down so many rabbit holes about society, capitalism, the patriarchy, our upbringing, issues with the school system, um, and more like about why we do this to ourselves, right? We could just keep going and we could try to root that out. But I really love Leonardo da Vinci's approach, which is this. He said that simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. So let's get all sophisticated up on this, okay? For the sake of simplicity. And because if you're like all of the entrepreneurs I met, we want to get to the heart of the matter so we can get back to work and carry on already. So while you'll hear me consistently beat the drum of slow down to speed or scale up, I also honor your desire to get into forward motion (laughs) A-S-A-F-P. So let's start by defining success. And because my coach hat whips itself off the rack and onto my head immediately when I start implementing the slowdown method, I've got some questions for you to contemplate, meditate, and journal on. Get ready to write. You might need to get, you know, have your pause button handy or just listen and come back to this part of our talk today. Question one, how do you define success? It's such an easy question, right? Or is it? How do you define success? Question two, what is your definition of success? Like for real, how much baggage we carry from our families, friends, ancestors, and society. Oh my gosh. If you could wave a magic wand, what would your success look like? And in order to really answer that question honestly, I think we need to go a little deeper. So bear with me here because question three is probably more like eight questions. So hang tight. Question three, what do you really want? I invite you to get into the minutia here. Do you want to make loads of money? Why? And don't, don't worry about your reasons. Write it all down. Write all the answers to these questions until you run out of answers. Take your judgment and set it aside. Take your conditioning and set it aside. Grab your magic wand, wave it. And write down the answers to these questions as if nobody was going to get in your way. Nothing was going to get in your way. The people who love you, they don't don't care what your reasons are. They just love you, right? So think of it this way. So do you want to make loads of money? Why? How about your time? How do you want to invest it outside of work? How do you want to invest it inside of work? How about your relationships? So this this is everything. Business associates or team, friends, family, your partner. What about your personal and spiritual development? Grab the magic wand. What does that look like? What does achieving success in your growth and development mean to you? How about your environment? That's your office, your car, your home, vacation places, place of worship, where you hang out. What does success look like to you there? How about your physical health? Do you have health, wellness, fitness goals? Do you want to sleep more? Do you, you know, do you want to drink more water? (laughs) What does it mean to you to be successful with your physical 
health. How about your professional self? And don't be afraid if this goes hog wild, right? Go run with it, right? So we're talking accomplishments, accolades, your growth, reaching goals, being known in your field as an expert, whatever it is, right? What does success look like in that area? How about fun? Oh my gosh, what? How about fun? Are you having any fun? And if you could have more, how would that look? And then finally, what kind of legacy do you want to leave? A lot of my clients who are parents kind of default to like, oh, well, my children are my legacy. No, 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 no. What is the mark you want to lead? Actually, not no to the kids, but in addition, what is the mark you want to lead? So this is question three. I think there's more like 11 parts to it. So you're going to want to come back and sort through this. Question four, how will you know when you've achieved success in each area? What does it look like? How does it feel, smell, sound? Are you with anyone? Are you on your own in some of these areas? There's no, there's no wrong answer. It's your success, your terms, your definition, your goals and desires. So question four, how will you know? What signs, what proof, what signs will you have of this success? And then question five is my awe question. And awe is, and what else? And you're going to ask yourself this question until you run out of answers. I invite you to spend no less than 30 minutes answering these five main questions, even though it's more like 20. You're welcome. But no less than 30 minutes, because by the time we get to about 30 minutes, we've gone outside of our regular thinking. So I invite you to go to 30 minutes or beyond answering these questions, either writing or voice messaging, or you can type them out. I encourage you if you're going to write that you handwrite just so it flows through you, but whatever works for you, the best way to get this done, right? You get to the end of those 30 minutes. That's when you've broken through your regular thinking and start getting into like the really good stuff. And that's where our growth is. That's the field of potentiality. That's that's possibility. That's where you can start to really, really come into the magic. So what do you do with these answers? Now, you might not like what I'm about to say. Now you've got your starting point. Uh, <laughs> but this is how you can write your personal and professional vision of success. I do this with my clients. I actually take them through a long, like 90 minute exercise where I'm asking lots and lots of questions and getting these answers. And then I go and write their vision of success for them as part of my services. So you can turn this into an exercise, right? And then take this and create your own updated story or your vision of success. So I want you to take these answers, write the story in the present tense as if you've met every goal and dream answer to how you define your success. So it might look something like this, okay? So we're gonna, you're gonna insert your first name and you kind of do it like you're writing a letter to yourself. So we'll just pretend like this is mine. Okay, Tracy, today you woke up feeling rested and ready to leap into the day like a gazelle. You slept better than you have in years, and you know it's because you decided to slow down, get clear about what you really want, and stay focused on the few things you know will bring you the success you crave. You're on track to surpass 50% growth in your business this year after you decided to narrow your niche and focus, and in doing so, you've recovered so much time and energy. Your team is incredible, and they're able to pick up where you leave off tackling the tasks that drain your energy so you can shift your attention back to strategic business objectives and tasks. So that's a start. You may want to be more specific about what those strategic business objectives and tasks are, but it's something like this, right? So you may also want to put something in here about your exercise, meditation, time with loved ones, how you're building your legacy, right? Make sure you hit all of it. And it's wide open for you and it's incredibly empowering to rewrite or update your story. Some of my clients over the years have been a little uncertain about this process, but because they've been referred by someone they know, like, and trust, or have had an experience of me, they decide to trust the process and go with it. And I am telling you, magic happens when we slow down to find success in all areas and in great detail of our life and business, and then move ourselves into action. We become impervious to the pressure of the hustle and grind around us because we become laser focused on what really matters and finding solutions to the challenges and issues that crop up. 
we become what appears to the outside world as a manifesting smooth production machine. But the real secret is in shutting down the noise and distractions around us. So what happens once you've rewritten your story? Well, now you get clear on action steps. You stay in the realm of realistic, but a stretch. This is where you might also consider hiring a coach, joining a mastermind, finding a mentor, or joining an online or in-person community of entrepreneurs who can provide support, guidance, and accountability. And then, like a dog with a bone, you stay focused on the why, then the what, and you do not let go. Break down your goals into bite-sized chunks set realistic timeframes for when you'll complete the tasks associated with meeting your goals and don't give up. I'm going to tell you, you know, most people, most people quit just before they meet their success. What's interesting is that usually in that moment of despair, when people quit, what's really happening is they're experiencing change down to a cellular level and they prematurely give up on it, thinking that all is lost. I would normally use a birth metaphor here, but let me use another one. Have you ever had a scratch or a cut, maybe a surgical incision? You know it's healing and you know you're getting close when it starts to feel tight, itchy, and uncomfortable. And it seems almost nothing, nothing provides relief beyond trying to stay focused on something else so your body can heal. So you're redirecting away from the pain into something that's productive. This is what it's like when you're so close to meeting your goal and you start to agitate. Your cells are responding to the different energy you're creating and attracting. Your ego is what will tell you to give up because change can be scary and it often feels like pain and most of us do not like pain. This is where your coach, mastermind, mentor, online or in-person group can really support you. And you can lean on them and let them hold the discomfort while you keep going. The cut is about to be done healing and then poof, As if by magic, you're not in pain anymore. If you were hiking, just to give you another analogy, this would be the equivalent of finally reaching the summit. That last mile is a total bugger and giving up sounds nice, but really it isn't an option because no matter what you do, there's still work to be done to reach the summit, especially if the return route or a bus is on the other side of it. Your success is on the other side of your discomfort. But it does not mean that you need to hustle your face off to meet it. The discomfort is not about grinding your gears and working till you collapse. Knowing the difference between almost their discomfort and the discomfort of a bear trap is the key. Now, you may be wondering, like, how how are you supposed to know the difference between almost their discomfort and success trap comfort, especially in the moment, right? This is where I teach my clients to lean back rather than lean in. Not a fan of the lean in, by the way, but I digress. That might be for another time. But so what is the lean back method of distinguishing the cause of discomfort? It's quite simple, and it may or may not surprise you that it involves slowing down again. It's a pause, reflect, redirect if necessary. That's it. And it looks like this. When you're feeling some pressure, pain, or discomfort, and you want to know if it's almost their discomfort or if you've leapt into the hustle bear trap, ask yourself this. Has this discomfort been going on longer than a few days? If no, it's likely almost their discomfort. You can also reflect on your recent activities. Are they focused on the goals you set to meet? If not, you know, you're going to want to check yourself before you wreck yourself. (laughs) So if it's been going on longer than a few days, then it's time to lean back a little bit more and survey the land, so to speak. So what have you been working on over the past few weeks and how is it directly related to your laser-focused vision of success? If you can't make the connection, get up from your chair, walk around, go outside for a few minutes if you can, then come back. This is important. Wash your hands, drink a glass of water, and then refocus on the vision of success story you wrote. Before you start working again, give yourself a hug, like for real, I'm doing it right now. Like put your arms around yourself, rub your arms, pat your shoulders, and then choose one task to focus on for the next 30 to 45 minutes. That task should be directly related to completing a step towards your goal. I would love for you to have the tools to head this off at the pass altogether. So here's another tip I give my clients, and it's directly 
what I learned from my first coach, Jody Nicholson. And here it is. At the end of each day, you acknowledge and celebrate your accomplishments. At the beginning of the day, you set your to-do list and that's fantastic. It helps you focus. It helps you get stuff done. But for those of us with gigantic visions, and that's most entrepreneurs, we really need to ritualize the following. Are you ready? Stand up, put your arms in victory V, and recite your ta-da list. No accomplishment is too small. I like to include like two to three personal accomplishments as well, like exercise and meditation, drinking plenty of water, something like that. So you make your ta-da list and you celebrate that to stay in good energy. (laughs) so you can shut down your day and get back to living your life or get forward into living your life. And then one last thing, remember to always, no matter your financial means or stage of business, relentlessly pursue building your business around your life, not the other way around. I'm going to repeat this. Remember to always, no matter your financial means or stage of business, relentlessly pursue building your business around your life not the other way around. Decide right now what kind of life you want to live, how to invest your time and energy, and then work your business around it. We're not taught that, and it sounds counterintuitive, especially in the beginning when your business is new and you're really you know, working to make that money. But if it sounds counterintuitive, just remember that you started your own business when most people prefer to avoid all that discomfort and responsibility. So why not go against the grain and do it your way on your own terms? Now you get to go and do this. (laughs) Now I know it can seem daunting to slow down and spend time on something like this. So I created a free workbook for you to rewrite your story, your own vision of success. You can go and get it at my website by going to tracytrapesky.com forward slash vision. And we'll send you the workbook so you can get started. Link will be in the show notes. I hope that you'll make the most of this free gift and put it to use. As always, you can reach out to us if you have any questions or would like to explore working together to make your vision of success your reality. I wish you the best of success and would like to remind you that the difference between being in the trap of hustle culture and almost there is in the simplest of terms, whether the discomfort comes on when you're getting close to meeting your goals or if it's been persisting for a few weeks or longer. Keep this in mind so you know when to keep going or when to take a pause to reflect and redirect. I am sending you so much love. See you next time. Thank you for listening to this episode of Entrepreneur Mindset Reset. Be sure to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss a show. As you know, reviews are what help your fellow entrepreneurs find the right podcasts for them. So please leave us a review and tell your friends about us so more people can hear the valuable information we share in each episode. If you are a medical practice owner and you're struggling with overwhelm from the daily business operations and decisions and trying to manage your time and all that juggling, schedule a talk with me by visiting my website at tracytrapesky.com forward slash medical hyphen practices. Link is in the show notes. We look forward to hearing from you and celebrating your success.